So you've got a $7,000 Tesla V100, and you want to cool it. I mean, you can use it in a server. You want to cool it. It doesn't have a built-in cooler. It's designed for server applications. But you're going to use it on <laughs> in some sort of off-road map, let's say, uh, use cases. Maybe you're building the uh, AI hotel from Altered Carbon. I wish. Uh, there's not enough free time. If only I had millions of dollars and a team working underneath me. Soon. Soon. Not soon. Not soon enough. The reason we're here is to put a block, an EK block for the V100, actually on the V100. It turns out the V100 is basically the same as uh, the uh, one of the Titans, so EK knows that. And they've come up with a brilliant block for it. Swapping it, it's really, it's pretty easy. The block comes with hookups for more traditional fittings, but the point of the work that I want to do to the system is to make it easy to swap the components in and out. So even though this is a water-cooled custom loop GPU, I want to make it easy to pop the GPU in and out. And so you look at that mount there for traditional fittings, it normally you would like screw a stack of those together and then that whole thing sort of screws into the side of the GPUs. And then when you need to you know, change things, you gotta drain your loop because when you pull that off, it's not, it's not great. But with the right angle fittings, which is part of the EK Quick Disconnect Kit, uh, and you're good to go. So there's really three things in this video. The back plate, which I'll get to, the Quick Disconnect thing, and the block. So that's all the stuff that's needed to hook up this V100. The quick disconnect kit, that's the real magic here. Next up is just popping all the screws out of the back of the V100. Now I like to start with the spring loaded screws or whatever screws are, are directly holding that heat sink on the actual silicon because you don't want to rock the heat sink and it can act like a lever and it'll crack the silicon in a worst case scenario and then you've damaged your GPU and that, that would be very bad. So. I usually start there and then it's just, you unscrew the rest of the screws. Usually that's all that's holding the PCB on to the rest of the GPU is just those screws. Sometimes you have to take something off from the top and then come in from, you know, from above with even more screws. Looking at you, Founders Edition of some of the cards, like I think the RTX 2080 Ti has like 4 million screws. It's a huge pain. But the V100, it's pretty straightforward. Now you may encounter a little resistance when you're trying to separate the PCB from the heatsink, and that's because there's a million thermal pads. In addition to the thermal paste between the GPU and the heatsink, that's the main thing that needs to be cooled. All of the VRM components and some of the regulator ICs and some of the control circuitry, all of that generates a lot of heat as well. And so there are thermal pads that are between that and other metallic parts of the, the heatsink shroud so that they can get ample heat dissipation. So you kind of would, can rock the PCB back and forth a little bit, and eventually you'll get it to release with a satisfying thunk. Be careful though, because this is still really delicate electronics. The EK kit includes replacement thermal pads, and I highly recommend that you use those. And if you pay attention to the thermal pads, like where they are and where they where they are in the heatsink or where they are in the PCB, you may notice that some thermal pads are thicker than others. On my particular V100, it's just the same thickness pretty much everywhere. But on our 2080 Ti that we did with the the Lignum cooler from EK, or the Lignum, the you know the really awesome wood grain kit. Uh, the, the thickness did vary a little bit, but you can use a sharp knife to cut down the width of it however you need and just stick those in the appropriate places. And that's what I did here in the V100 using the included thermal pads. There are also replacement screws, so don't try to reuse any of the screws from the existing heatsink. Save those in case you need to uh, ever put this thing back together. I use poster putty. I literally just use poster putty and affix the screw like where it came from, so I don't even have to keep track of it. And so that makes it really easy to package this thing for dealing with it later. When you're ready to put the block on the GPU, put some dots of thermal paste and you know I'm using the included EK paste on your actual GPU I'm using this dot pattern it works well and make sure that you've replaced your your thermal pads and you're good to go to mount your block now with your block mounted I usually go corner to corner on the GPU again and sort of put that there assemble it according to EK's directions uh, sometimes you need to use a uh, little plastic washer. Sometimes you need to use two little plastic washers. Just check the information that came with your specific kit because it will vary a little bit depending on, you know, was this an early revision? Was this a late revision? Did they discover something? Don't take my video as the gospel, but basically you're just putting the screws back in. And when you put the first screws into the block, do it catty cornered on the GPU across the silicon. So you got the four main screws, like the four with the springs, but in the replacement screw kit from EK, there's not really springs with those. 
but you can use little plastic washers so that you get the appropriate tension from the block on the GPU. Just don't over tighten it. Now I've tried it both ways with springs and the little plastic washers. And I found that over time, the little plastic washers tend to hold up better because it applies more tension continuously on the GPU. Your mileage may vary. And again, check the documentation, do it according to the documentation, but I've done my own experiments. Now EK's also got this killer backplate that you can use a nice sort of, you know, there's a there's undertones of something going on, but it's sort of a dark black color, but I'm packing these in so tight in an Epic system that I'm going to leave the backplane off for now. Now that we've got it back together, we can mount the adapter for the barbs uh, so that we can sort of have fluid going in and out of the GPU. Don't forget the rubber O-rings because if you don't have those, it's going to leak. And sometimes those goes, those go bad and you have to replace those. And so like, it's like, oh, I'm going to clean my loop really good once a year. Just go ahead and replace the O-rings. These barbs screw in just like regular, you know, where you would put your normal fittings. Uh, but they're designed for that small diameter black tubing. You can use pliers. There's a little clamp that comes in the kit. You can slip the clamp on the tubing, then slip the tubing and the clamp over the barb using pliers to keep the clamp held open and then sort of let the clamp go where that little the little ring is on the barb and that's or a little bit below that and that's really going to hold the tubing on at the other end of your black tubing you can hook up your quick disconnect fittings and then you should be all set now these quick release fittings they go into an ek distribution block and that's what i'm using in my new thread ripper system that's in another video so be sure to check that out but i love this now because i can quick disconnect my GPUs or any anything else that I've got going through the block system without having to drain the loop. I mean, it's, it's sort of a spring-loaded deal, and even though there's a ton of you know fluid in the loop, once I squeeze that and pull it loose, there's no leaks. And then I just want to put a GPU back in, I can slip and put it on. The only thing I gotta be careful about is to make sure that the direction of fluid flow is correct, because I want the fluid to hit the jet plate, you know, as quick as possible. Although in practice, I don't know that it really matters too much. With this setup, now I can swap this GPU in and out. I can move it between systems, depending on what my particular needs are. This is really awesome. I don't have to drain the loop. I don't have to do really anything super complicated. It's not a huge pain in my butt. I can pull it out of the system and leave it out of the system. And hey, that works completely fine. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and I'll see you at the level one forums.